Congratulations to David Benavidez, even though he lost his strap on the scale. He made it up fight night because he put on a hell of a show against a very exciting opponent, Angulo, that brought the best out of Benavidez. Benavidez showed his class by stopping Angulo, who never been stopped before after the 10th round, going into the championship rounds. This was a very, very exciting fight to say the least. And that's why Benavidez is known for being one of the most exciting fighters in boxing today. The combination of his speed, power, and his heart. Whenever he gets hit, he returns the favor and leather right away, which makes him a TV-friendly fighter. Benavidez showed his class today because Angulo, he came to fight. 75% of the time you could categorize a fighter as a bull or a matador. And Angulo was a definition of a pit bull slash a bull in the ring. I mean, the man literally came to fight. He wasn't backing down from Benavidez. Even when the fight wasn't going his way, he was still fighting like he was winning. He fought like he the Frazier of our time which I'm referring to him giving it his all. Angulo showed he had cojones because he didn't care about Benavidez's reputation and potential in the sport of boxing. He still came at him like a bull, taking chances with a whole lot of head movement. However, Benavidez was just on another class and another level. Therefore, shout out to Angulo for putting on a hell of a show and a hell of an effort that's what you have to do when you so outclassed against your opponent. You're going to have to take it to him. On the other hand, Benavidez, he stick to the game plan. I will give him a B plus due to the fact that he got hit every now and then. And also, we can't ignore him falling off balance every now and then. So that's why I give him a B plus. And I believe he also gave himself a B plus. Nevertheless, one thing I got to give Benavidez credit for since he been receiving a whole lot of backlash due to the fact that he missed weight getting stripped of the WBC title, Benavidez took full responsibility. He stated that I will take the backlash because I did make that mistake. Regardless, if it was a miscalculation, he stated that he will take full responsibility, which is the main objective here. He already apologized to the fans that he let down, but more importantly, he's taking responsibility for his actions that caused him to get stripped of the WBC for the second time. It was obvious that the first time wasn't due to him missing weight. However, this time around, people questioned his discipline. But the way he performed tonight, he showed that he's one of the best 168 pounders. It will be a darn shame if Benavidez moves up to light heavyweight without unifying against the best at 168. It's obvious that Caleb Plant and Benavidez are the top two main players at 168. They've been going back and forth for some time, but I think it's time to make the unification. However, that won't happen till Benavidez get his strap back that he lost on the scale. Another great fight for Benavidez is Jamal Charlo. In fact, Charlo actually called out Benavidez, making it clear once he moves up to 168, that's the fight he wants. He wants the top dogs right away. Jamal Charlo is occupied at the moment fighting the likes of Deviachenko on pay-per-view. So if he is successful, that's another option for Benavidez. Benavidez welcomed the smoke with open arms. Therefore, Benavidez is actually in a great position because there's so many options, including Canelo. But ironically, Canelo stated that he won't fight his fellow Mexican brothers, even though he fought Angulo. And I'm not talking about Angulo that Benavidez fought tonight. I'm talking about the original pit bull. He was Mexican. Lopez was Mexican. But I guess Canelo, when he says, I won't fight my fellow Mexican brothers, he's referring to the top competition. See, when it comes to the weak competition, 
he will welcome the smoke with open arms. Like Lopez, for example. Due to the fact that Lopez was two divisions below Canelo Alvarez, Lopez was fighting at 140. He had to move up literally two divisions to fight Canelo. So we did not hear Canelo Alvarez claim he not interested in fighting Lopez because that's his fellow Mexican brother. And the same case applied on Angulo because they were tailor made for his style or they were at a huge disadvantage. I don't see Canelo Alvarez looking to face Benavides. That will be such a classic fight. I mean, that's as close as we are gonna get to the Barrera Morales, the Barrera Marquez of our time. How come we don't have the luxury of seeing the Mexican wars of old days? All thanks to Canelo because he don't wanna fight his fellow Mexican brothers that could actually fight. Which begs the question, is Canelo Alvarez even Mexican anymore? Because I'm starting to hear he's originally Irish. I know one thing for sure, Benavidez have Mexican cojones because he's willing to fight Canelo. He's willing to fight Trollo. He's also willing to fight Caleb Plant. It's only Canelo Alvarez that's still maneuvering to this day. So while Benavidez shows homage by actually paying homage, wanting to share the ring with an Aki of his, a Mexican brother of his, like Canelo Alvarez, he called out Canelo on more than one occasion, respectfully. On the other hand, Canelo ignored him on more than one occasion but you can run however you can't hide. And if Benavidez stays focused, stays disciplined, putting on a hell of a show every time he's on TV like he did tonight, slowly but surely, he will become the new face of Hispanic boxing, the new Mexican face of boxing. And Canelo Alvarez could stay away from him as much as he likes, but eventually he's going to have to face Benavidez. Therefore, the sky's the limit for Benavidez. He could go as far as he could imagine. All he have to do is stay determined to stay away from what tricks the eyes and pleases the stomach. I mean, don't get me wrong. I treat every day like it's my birthday when it comes to eating. But as a fighter, you have to maintain your diet. You could work out how you're supposed to do, but a whole lot of that working out is also in the kitchen. So with that being stated, drop in the comment section below what you guys thought of Benavidez's performance tonight. Who will be the king at 168? I also had the pleasure of interviewing David Morrell Jr., which I'm going to drop the interview tomorrow. So be on the lookout for the cookout. He's 3-0 and he's already an interim champion at 168. So 168 is definitely heating up which I think David Morrell is arriving right on time. With that being stated, subscribe. If you're trying to get smarter by the minute, if you're trying to get dumb about a second, don't and listen to these decaps. The dumb casual ass fans that don't know shit about boxing. Word to Roger Mayweather, may he rest in peace, inshallah. And if you're a casual fan and you want to be a hardcore, all you have to do is click on the notification bell to get notified every time I post or go live on Split Decision. It's a boxing debate slash talk show mix, master engineer, produced by yours truly, Aki, the past, present, and future undisputed pound for pound, number one when it comes to debating. I also got another show hosted every Sunday called Aki Boxing Hood. Aki stands for my brother, and this is the brotherhood of boxing. So if you want to be part of the brotherhood, subscribe and click on the notification bell. And to be continued on the next episode, of Aki, Aki, Ak TV. Peace, and we out of here.